And then I think our most striking or most novel result was with lying time. So we measured cows resting behavior. So total time that they spent lying each day, how many discrete lying bouts they had and how long those lying bouts lasted. And we found differences between the treatments there. And that was really exciting for us because no study before had documented an effect of heat abatement on resting behavior. So we found that when cows had fans, they got up and down fewer times and they stayed lying down for longer each time, which added up to more total lying time. So this was what we were super excited about because it showed that fans not only reduce these thermoregulatory responses and restore milk yield and dry matter intake, fans can also restore lying time. Hello, everyone. This is Luis Ferrero, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today we will continue our discussion about heat stress in dairy cows with Dr. Jennifer Van Oss, assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, Jennifer, thanks again for uh, participating with us of this podcast. So if you could please describe a little bit of that study and showcase some of the results that you found, I think people would truly appreciate that. Yeah. So as you said, fans are already commonplace, but the reason that we thought more research would be necessary was because of an interesting observation that our colleague, Dr. Nigel Cook from the UW-Madison Vet School, he his group had observed that on farms where cows were lying in a bedded pack, say in a maternity pen, they seem to cluster in the airstream. So there seems to be something about fast moving air that cows were responding to behaviorally. And that really intrigued me because we have a lot of different heat abatement mechanisms, including soakers, which is what I had done my PhD about in California. But even though soakers are very effective for cooling cows, and we see that they reduce cows' thermoregulatory responses, improve dry matter intake, improve milk yield, soakers don't seem to help them with resting behavior in the summer. So many studies have shown that as THI increases in the summer, cows spend less time lying down. And that's concerning because depending on their housing system, if they're spending less time lying down, it means they're spending more time standing up, probably on concrete, potentially on wet concrete. And that's if they have soakers, they use them, it cools them down, but they're they're spending too much time standing up. And we think that can be a risk for lameness. So when Dr. Cook pointed out this pattern where they saw cows responding behaviorally to fast moving air, that gave us the idea to apply for some funding. And so we were very grateful to receive a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture a few years ago. And so my former PhD student, Dr. Kim Reuscher, was the one who carried out the study with fantastic help from our uh, research facility staff at the UW-Madison Dairy Herd. During COVID lockdown, they really picked up the slack and they did, worked so hard to keep the research going. So I want to acknowledge them as well. But what we did was we systematically manipulated the airspeed in the cow's resting stalls. And so this is why it was novel. This hadn't been done before. There's lots of studies showing that fans are effective. That's why they're so common in the industry. But just because you install the fans doesn't mean they're doing exactly what they're intended. So we measured the air speeds in the free stalls at cow resting height. So that's about half a meter off the ground. So we had a control treatment in the naturally ventilated barn where the fans were off. And then the air speeds were about 0.4 meters per second. And then we had two fan treatments. This was with variable drive fans. So we could adjust the fan power, which then manipulated the airspeed. So we set the fans to 60% power, which is what it took to achieve at least one meter per second in every stall. So on average, the airspeed was 1.7 meters per second. And then our final treatment was we just turned the fans to maximum power, 100%, to represent a scenario where a farm doesn't have variable drive and it's just on or off. And in that treatment, it was 2.4 meters per second at cow resting height. Yeah, no, I was going to ask, and how did the cows react to those treatments? Yeah, it was it was very striking, actually. Even the farm staff could feel the difference. <laughs> uh, but our, our results were really striking, actually. I think it's the, the cleanest, most beautiful results we've ever seen from any study. And this was a replicated crossover design. So all groups of cows got all three treatments in, in different orders. And so we measured some of these basic thermoregulatory indicators like respiration rate, which is an early sign that the cows are trying to cope with this increased heat load. We measured skin temperature and then intravaginal temperature. And with all of those thermoregulatory responses, we found a difference between the control treatment, 
with just the natural ventilation and then the two fan treatments, but no difference between those two fan treatments. So just that 60% fan power generating at least one meter per second of airspeed at cow resting height was enough to sufficiently cool the cows. Um, and then we also measured dry matter intake and milk yield. And again, found the exact same pattern where there was a difference between the control treatment and the two fan treatments, but not between the two fan treatments. And there was a lag between the previous day's THI and then this response in dry matter intake and, line, and um, milk yield, which is what other studies have also found. And then I think our most striking or most novel result was with lying time. So we measured cows resting behavior. So total time that they spent lying each day, how many discrete lying bouts they had and how long those lying bouts lasted. And we found differences between the treatments there. And that was really exciting for us because no study before had documented an effect of heat abatement on resting behavior. So we found that when cows had fans, they got up and down fewer times and they stayed lying down for longer each time, which added up to more total lying time. So this was what we were super excited about because it showed that fans not only reduce these thermoregulatory responses and restore milk yield and dry matter intake, fans can also restore lying time. No, I think those are great results. And as you said, it, it sounds very clean, right? Which is something that in science we don't see very often, right? So so I'm glad you were able to fi find those and, and obviously share those with people at home. But my understanding is that after this study, you went ahead and you run another study, but with commercial settings to try to uh, fully understand, okay, so what else can we learn about that? And uh, so what were your other steps after that study and what did you test? Yeah, and that, that's exactly right. And this is where Dr. Hook's team with the Darylin Initiative has a lot of good experience out in the field taking these airspeed measurements and they're the ones who actually came up with this method. So we wanted to take the data that we found from our controlled experiment, which went so nicely and see, okay, we think that now we're confirming what these previous engineering models had suggested, but we're doing it with actual animal data. So we're, we know that in our research facility, if we calibrate the fan so that every stall has at least one meter per second of airspeed at cow resting height, we get these beautiful results. But what happens in the real world where, you know, farmers are installing fans, they don't necessarily have this ability to calibrate. So then what effect does this have on lying time? So we took a sample of real Wisconsin commercial facilities. Some of them were naturally ventilated, like our research farm. The others were mechanically cross-ventilated. So instead of fans directly blowing on the cows, they have a negative pressure system that pulls air across the barn to generate that high speed air. And so we took measurements throughout the resting area in the stalls to look at not just what were the air speeds, but how consistent were they between the stalls. And then we again use these automatic data loggers to measure the lying time in cows in the barn. And what we found was that the average air speed again did have an effect, but what was more important was the variability. So even if you look across the barn and the average airspeed was more than one meter per second, if there was more variation between the stalls and the airspeed, so less consistency, then we also saw more variation in the cow's line times. So again, just looking at the average can sometimes mask what's happening to an individual animal. But when we're talking about animal welfare, animal welfare is something that matters to each individual animal. And so that's why it's important to measure and look at the individual variation. So our conclusion there was that it's important to have these consistent, sufficiently high air speeds. And that's why this calibration is so important. Introducing Ultrasorb R3.0, Volac's comprehensive and complete solution to reduce the negative impact of naturally occurring toxins on ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 is a species-specific product designed to mitigate the effects of specific mycotoxins in the gastrointestinal tract of ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 also offers lipopolysaccharides binding capabilities. Endotoxins such as LPS can contribute to inflammation in ruminants with energy partitioned to mount an immune response instead of production. Learn more about Ultrasorb R3.0 at volac.com. Yeah, that's that. That sounds really nice as well. Obviously, uh, all the cows deserve the best airspeed and be fully cool during the summer, right? And uh, no, no doubts there for sure. Uh, Jennifer, these are very nice results. 
uh, very interesting studies. By the way, people at home, if you have interest learning more about those studies, we're going to have a link uh, for them uh, together with this podcast. So you can go through, read everything and learn all the related information about that. Uh, Jennifer, thanks again for joining us today. I'm sure people at home learn a lot about the importance of heat stress and uh, from, from a very different perspective, right? Because I think we target a lot of different things uh, in terms of heat stress, but I'm pretty sure people will really enjoy that. So thanks again. Thank you at home for joining us today and I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. Hey everyone, we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.